The Lord be with you. Good morning, and welcome to this service of worship. A warm welcome to all of you who would normally sit here in these pews, and a special welcome to those who are joining us from other places. Know that all are welcome here, and we are all invited to participate in this service. Follow the bulletin either on the screen or print a copy of it uh, in your home. The special feature of our worship today will be lifting up and celebrating our graduating high school seniors, and we will have a time in this worship service to hear from them what they remember and have enjoyed here at First Presbyterian Church, and then where their journey is taking them next. I do want to thank each and every one of you that uh, participated not only in this service, but have participated in the past weeks in liturgy and musical offerings. And of course, we always thank our wonderful recording engineer, Jacob Gooch. Uh, Jacob has come up with a wonderful idea of each of us being able to share, if we wish, personal joys and concerns uh, from the safety and comfort of our own homes. An attachment, that a link that came out with this service that you opened up, will uh, provide the directions from Jacob about how to do this and will also give you uh, a link that you can click on after you've recorded and send it to Jacob, and he will assemble all of this. And these joys and concerns are something new for us, new for this congregation, but they will add to and deeply enrich, I think, uh, our time of prayers of the people, especially as we must continue uh, distancing and um, being support for and with one another from afar. And now let us prepare our hearts to worship God. Good morning. The service music today marks the turning of the calendar. The first piece is by Belgian composer Joseph Jongen, his May song. The musical offering during the service is by German composer uh, Felix Mendelssohn from his Songs Without Words, his piano piece entitled May Breezes. And finally, the postlude is a brief toccata by American composer Daniel Gothrop. This week, the classical music world lost Lynn Harrell, one of the great cellists of the 20th century. He began his work as a member of the Cleveland Orchestra under George Zell, and then went on to a long and successful solo career. As fate would have it, he happened to be the soloist on the first symphony orchestra concert I ever attended 40 years ago at Severance Hall. During the first half of the program, he played the uh, Haydn C major cello concerto. Then after intermission, in a beautiful act of musical humility, he, re he snuck in actually to the back of the cello section and from the back stand played the Dvorak New World Symphony with his former colleagues. It was a great example of never forgetting where you've come from and who helped you along the way.
invite you to join me in our call to worship. We are different people, each one of us unique. We look different, sound different, think different thoughts, hold different opinions, feel different emotions. We are not one in the same. And, and yet, yet we, we gather, gather this day in a common faith. faith. In, in this, this time of worship, worship we, we rehearse our, our common, common stories, stories, sing our common, common songs, Give generously to one common mission of love and live into the hope we share. Come, let us worship together. Let us pray. We gather as did the first followers of Jesus who embodied love and showed us how to be the very presence of God. May our faith deepen beyond personal piety and mere tradition to become the story of compassion and social justice we tell with every breath of our lives. Amen. Please join us in our prayer of confession. When self-serving agendas threaten to dismantle the heart of the ministry we share, forgive us, gracious God. When interpersonal conflicts tear at the soul of community, forgive us, precious God. When history becomes exclusive and relationships become insular, forgive us, gracious God. When the energy of the church is invested in self-preservation rather than acts of love towards others, forgive us, gracious God. When our differences undermine the foundation we share in Christ, forgive us, gracious God. Gracious God, hear our prayers. Amen. Amen. Held in a common love that is within, between, and beyond all, we know forgiveness and are formed into a community of love in all things. May God grant us to live into that love. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Dear God, during this unfortunate time, we ask that you keep this new coronavirus from continuing to spread. Help people decide to stay home instead of traveling or going out needlessly. And while it may be heartbreaking, comfort families as they decide to keep their distance from elderly or other high-risk family members. Be present now to people who need your loving touch because of COVID-19. May they feel your power of healing through the care of doctors and nurses. Take away the fear, anxiety, and feelings of isolation from people receiving treatment or under quarantine. Give them a sense of purpose in pursuing health 
and protecting others from exposure to the disease. God, as more people get sick, healthcare workers and first responders are working longer hours with fewer supplies and with more risk of contracting the new coronavirus themselves. Renew their energy and sustain them on long shifts. Prote bring your protection upon them as they work with patients. Be with people making decisions that affect the lives and futures of our families, communities, countries, and the wider world. We pray that they communicate clearly, truthfully, and calmly with each other and with the public, and that their messages are heard, received, and heeded. May everyone stay faithful to you and your word as we recite the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive, forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. It is our great joy this morning, here in the middle of our worship together, to honor our graduating high school seniors. Cameron Edmiston, Mason Garcia, Mackenzie Hancock, Emma LaJudas, and Zach Miller. Except for Cameron, they will each be speaking to you from their place of distancing. But I would like to share this about Cameron. He will be attending college music conservatory this fall as he continues with his interests in piano and musical theater accompanying. 
So as we hear from the remaining seniors, let us lift them up. Let us lift them up, each and every one of us, because we have supported them through all of their years with us and are promising to continue that support as they journey on in, on the many paths that are set before them. Hi, I'm Mason Garcia. I'm graduating from Worcester High School. I think the most important thing I learned from Sunday school was the importance of volunteering from cooking to sorting goods at people to people, uh, the impact it had on our community. Um, the coronavirus has affected me by canceling graduation, my lacrosse season, Clue, any senior prank we were gonna pull, um, and any plans I had with my friends. Um, so that's fun, but we're safe. So always give thanks for that. Uh, I'm going to OSU, Ohio State University, for something in the science field. I'm undecided on that, but I'm looking forward to it. Hi, my name is Kenzie Hancock, and I'll be telling you a little about myself today. I've been involved with this church my whole life, being involved with youth group, Sunday school, kids club, vacation Bible school session, and I'm also a member of the congregation. I will be a graduate from the Triway High School. In high school, I was involved with softball, basketball, tennis, marching band, concert band, jazz band, and I'm also a member of the National Honor Society. Being involved, I gained so many social skills and I allowed me to be more outgoing as well. Being involved with the church has opened doors for me to let me have some lifelong friends and I love the supportive congregation as well. In the fall, I will be attending Mount Vernon Nazarene to study business and as well as sports management, and I will be playing softball. I chose this school because it is a smaller school and the community is great as well as down there, and it reminded me a lot of Worcester. Plus, being a Nazarene uh, university, I wanted to strengthen my faith with God as well. During this quarantine, it let me realize that God does everything for a reason. He has a reason for all of us being in here because he wanted to protect all of us and have us to stay safe and healthy. This past winter, uh, I've been conditioning, working out, training for my upcoming softball spring season, my senior season. My team was supposed to be pretty good, and unfortunately, that didn't happen because we are all in quarantine. But I feel like that God did this for a reason, for all of us to be here together. Like, during quarantine, I learned that there's more to life than just playing softball or playing a sport, that we need to learn the people around us, and we need to love them as well so all of us can stay safe and healthy. He wanted to slow our lives down because we were moving too fast to learn more about the people around us, the world that we have, and the world that we live in. I, I hope that everyone will stay healthy as the next couple weeks, and I hope to see you sometime soon. Thank you. My name is Emma Judas, and I'm graduating from Worcester High School. At Worcester, I was a three-season athlete in soccer, swimming, and lacrosse, and I was also in the marching band. Throughout all of these activities, I've always appreciated the support that so many members of First Presbyterian Church provided through their attendance at my various events or taking time to ask me about my latest event or game. I really appreciated knowing that First Presbyterian Church members took a personal interest in me. Next fall, I will be attending Ohio Northern University. And while I'm undecided on what I'm going to major in, I'm interested in exercise physiology, criminal justice, and education. I will also be playing on the women's lacrosse team. I've been a part of First Presbyterian Church since I was just a few months old. I always enjoyed attending Kids Club and looked forward to Vacation Bible School every summer. I also recall many fun times with other church families, such as bowling, holiday parties, or trips to Ramsire Farms. I've also been a member of the youth group and did a lot of fun activities, including Italian dinners, beach cleanup at Cedar Point, and participating in youth Sundays. 
This year, I've enjoyed serving as a youth elder. I know I've learned many more things during my time on session than just how churches run. I've learned how important it is to recognize and value all the hard work that so many volunteers put into the church without much recognition. I've learned that these experiences, memories, and connectedness among so many people are what makes being a part of a community, in my case, the church, such a valuable thing. It is a memory and experience I will cherish forever and will take with me wherever life takes me. All right, hello everybody. I'm Zach Miller and I'd like to share a little bit about my time here at FPC growing up. As many of you know, I've been coming to this church since I was about four years old, and it is inside these church walls where I've had some quite memorable and meaningful experiences. Some memories that I hold especially close include coming to Kids Club and Vacation Bible School in my earlier years, playing tuba for service from time to time, going through the confirmation process with my mentor, Linda Bush, visiting the Islamic Center of Cleveland as part of a Sunday school unit, making mint brownies for the Presbyterian Women's Services Auction and for our Italian dinner fundraisers, having the chance to observe the inner workings of our church as a youth session representative, connecting with my recent youth mentor, Laura Neal, serving as a Sunday sexton, and of course, attending the 2017 and 2018 Montreat Youth Conferences in North Carolina, as well as the 2019 Trinium Youth Conference in Indiana. Throughout all of these experiences, one thing has remained constant. That is the truly unconditional nurturing, support, and encouragement that I felt from the FPC family. I consider myself so fortunate to have been given the opportunity to be part of a family such as this one, and I feel that a family is exactly what we are. I still have so many questions about myself and my faith, but I have no doubt that you all will continue to guide me in my journey, just as you have done continuously for all of these years. It sounds simple, but to have a place where I don't have to hide an ounce of my personality or my fears is really special to me. As I flip the page to the, next, to the next chapter in my book, I look forward to still seeing you all regularly, just maybe not as often, as I continue to save a special spot in my heart for this congregation. Speaking of my next chapter, I suppose I'd better tell you where I'm going. I have a burning passion for travel, and flight in particular. I've known that I've wanted to pursue the field of flight for many years, and I am so excited to finally be able to do so. This past March, I made the official decision to commit my future studies to the Florida Institute of Technology in Melbourne, Florida. There, I will be working towards a degree in aviation management, while hopefully also undergoing flight training so that I may someday become a commercial airline pilot. Thank you all again for all that you've given me, and I look forward to the day <clears throat> where we can all see each other in person again. And now I invite you to join with me in a prayer of blessing and commissioning of our graduates. This prayer is written by Professor David Baltzer, who teaches at Canadian Mennonite University. Let us join in prayer. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. With the psalmist, we stand in awe and humility, O God, our Creator. Of the good gifts you have given us in these graduating seniors, you have instilled in them an insatiable curiosity about your world, your people, and your earth. This curiosity, this thirst for truth, has enriched the life of First Presbyterian, and we are so grateful for the privileged years of friendship, of diligence and struggle, of new insight and discovery. And now, as they go from here, 
We ask that you would graciously continue to fill them with a deep and abiding knowledge of your love for them. And we ask that, by your Spirit, they may tend to the world and help set it right once again. Give them open hearts to feel its pain and courage enough not to be overwhelmed by its suffering. May they taste the joy of seeing your kingdom come in every corner of this planet. And we ask that, by your Spirit, they would add to the beauty in your world. Fuel them with imagination as artisans of word, song, and deed that comes to terms with both the wounds of the world and the promise of the healing and wholeness of all things. And we ask by your Spirit that they be nourished and renewed by hope May mercy, beauty, truth, and hope be theirs in this world for the sake of all creation. And now we speak this blessing on them from the book of Numbers, chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of Christ, amen. Together we serve, united by love, inviting God's world to the glorious feast. We work and we pray through sorrow and joy, extending God's love to the last and the least. We seek to become a beacon of hope, a lamp for the heart and a light for the feet. We learn year by year to let love shine through until we see Christ in each person we meet. We welcome the scarred, the wealthy, the poor, the busy, the lonely, and all who need care. We offer a home to those who will come, our hands quick to help, our hearts ready to dare. Together by grace we witness and work, remembering Jesus in whom Strong. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering love is the strength of our song. What joyful and inspirational words, especially in this time of pandemic we have just sung in our hymn. Together we serve in spirit and truth, remembering love is the strength of our song. I do hope we will sing this hymn in our heads all week, for we have been given hope, hope not just in that joyful text and joyful tune, but hope witnessed to us in the lives of our graduating seniors. And we will truly remember and pray for them as they go from us. And for all of us, 
let us remember that we are embraced in the steadfast love of God forever, that we are embraced in the grace of Jesus Christ now and always, and that together, guided, inspired by Holy Spirit, we live lives of faithful witness and loving service each and every day of our lives. May God's hope and peace, joy and love abide with you even in these days.